This Sunday School lesson will be for March the 10th, 2019. The title of this lesson is Call to Sacrifice. The scripture text for this lesson is the book of Mark chapter 1 verses 16 through 20 and also the book of Luke chapter 14 25 through 33. Recommended scripture is Philippians chapter 3, 7 through 16. This is the International Sunday School lesson. Scripture text will be read in the form of the New Living Translation. Perhaps you have heard or read news stories about the percentage of people who are Christians in various parts of the world. Social scientists commonly survey populations to discover people's religious affiliation, noting trends over time. To be identified as a Christian in most such surveys usually requires only a claim to be a Christian. Few surveys ask about behaviors and practices as evidence of Christian commitment. The foundations of prayer, Bible reading, and worship attendance are ignored. Thus, many people are counted as Christians merely through their self-identification as such. A term often applied to such people is nominal Christians, meaning existing only in name. They are Christians in name only. Before we form an opinion regarding the validity of that designation, we should consider what Jesus has to say about it in today's lesson. Reading scripture starting with Mark 1, verse 16. One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Read in commentary from verses 16 through 20. We often assume that Jesus' disciples were great men of faith from the first time they met Jesus, but they had to grow in their faith just as all believers do. Chapter 14, 48 through 50, and verses 6, 66 through 72, John 14, 1 through 9, and chapter 20, 26 through 29. This is apparently not the only time Jesus called Peter, Simon, James, and John to follow him. See Luke 5, 1 through 11, and John 1, 35 through 42, for two other times. Although it took time for Jesus' call and his message to get through, the disciples followed. In the same way, we may question and falter. But we must never stop following Jesus. Fishing was a major industry around the Sea of Galilee. Fishing with nets was the most common method. Jesus called the disciples to fish for people with the same energy they had used to fish for food. The gospel would be like a net, lifting people from dark waters into the light of day and transforming their lives. How can God use you to fish for people's soul? How can you train new converts to find new seas and cast new nets where waters have never been fished before? The gospel makes missionaries of all God's people. Where are you casting your net? Continuing with the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 25. The cost of being a disciple. A large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, 
If you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else by comparison. Your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost, for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Otherwise you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers marching against him? And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Reading commentary from verses 25 through 33. Jesus' audience was well aware of what it meant to carry one's own cross. When the Romans led a criminal to his execution site, he was forced to carry the cross on which he would die. This showed his submission to, the Rome, to Rome and warned observers that they had better submit too. Jesus made this statement to get the crowds to think through their enthusiasm for him. He encouraged those who were superficial either to go deeper or to turn back. Following Christ means total submission to him, perhaps even to the point of death. See chapter 9 verse 23. When a builder doesn't count the cost or estimates inaccurately, the building may be left incomplete. Will you abandon the Christian life after a little while because you did not count the cost of commitment to Jesus? What are those costs? Christians may face loss of social status or wealth. They may have to give up control of their money, their time, or their career. They may be hated, separated from their family, and even put to death. Following Christ does not mean a trouble-free life. We must carefully count the cost of becoming Christ's disciples so that we will firmly hold to our faith and won't be tempted later to turn back. Verse 26, King James Version. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus begins with a list of family relationships that people cherish most. These are not merely valued by his audience. They were regarded rightly sacred. Faithfulness as a child, spouse, parent, or sibling is demanded by God's law. Added to this list is one's own life, one's very existence. Yet Jesus said that to be his disciple, one who follows him, and learns from him how to live a godly life, one must hate all these. This is how Jesus makes his point. Important as such relationships are, following Jesus is even more important. Those who follow him must do so with the understanding that nothing else can be allowed to interfere. To be a disciple is greater than any other value or relationship. Disciples learn that following him does not diminish love for others. Rather, it increases it. The irony of Jesus' instruction is that only by putting him in unchallenged first place does one learn to love faithfully those most cherished. But make no mistake, relationship with those for whom one would give one's own life are still of less value than following Jesus as a disciple. In the study of the two lesson texts, we have seen how two seemingly incompatible ideas belong together. Jesus indeed brings God's promised rule, but he warns us that God's victory is achieved in weakness, lowliness, and suffering. We cannot expect to receive a calling from the Lord as dramatic as the one that Peter, Andrew, James, and John received. 
None of us are called to be eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry on earth as those four were. Yet, like them, we share in his mission of advancing the promised reign of God. Jesus calls us to be his instruments so that God's will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. That calling makes us more than people who give lip service to a vaguely Christian identity. Rather, Jesus' call demands of us of our all. That call challenges our fundamental relationships, even as it compels us to love our family and friends more than we ever had before. The call demands that all our possessions and time be put at God's disposal as we invest earthly resources for eternal return, the harvest of souls. The call means leaving many treasures behind, but receiving countless more in return. Luke chapter 18, 29 and 30. Some think of the word Christian to be a term for those who confess Christ, while the word disciple is reserved for those seriously committed to following him. The New Testament knows no such distinction. To confess Christ as Lord demands a counting of all costs of that confession. The cost is everything, but the payoff if that's the best term, is participation in the eternal victorious rule of God Almighty, heaven. Comment, rate, and subscribe. And this concludes the lesson for March the 10th, 2019.